I thought it would be cool for the sake of personal growth, documenting uh, one's past and stuff like that to start a video vlog that I'm going to call Business and Fitness, which will basically be uh, video vlogs, behind the scenes type things um, based around kind of myself and my partner and, and, our, and, and the things we've done in business and the things we're going to do and kind of give a lot of people out there that ask, you know, ask me so many questions about the back end of stuff or are really just intrigued about how the business side of, say, the fitness industry works um, as fans and stuff like that. Not fans of me, fans of the industry and just fans of business and entrepreneurs in general. Coming into July will be the fourth year we've been in business. Basically, over the years I've been asked uh, many times by a lot of people, some that I know, some that I don't know, about how I started uh, and how I've got to where I am now um, where I'm going, a lot of questions like that. You'd be, I mean, I was surprised about how many times I got asked, and I, and I, I always wanted to kind of address them in an open plan. I'm going to do a lot of little in between things, and you know, you'll either find it interesting or you won't. That's what the subscribe button's for. So I kind of wanted to start out right at the beginning. Um, this is going to be a long video, more of an introduction to what fitness and business will be, uh, so you kind of know what you're getting in for if you do subscribe and you want to kind of follow the way we're going. So basically, when I graduated high school, I went straight to uni um, at QUT in Queensland and studied a dual degree of human movement and marketing. After about a year and a half of um, human movement, I got sick of it and basically dropped out. It was way too in-depth for what I wanted to be at the time, which was just a PT. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So three and a half years in, I'd be, I was working full-time as a, as a manager at different shops, Workout World, Staunch, Fitness Market, a whole bunch of supplement and fitness stores, uh, just as a casual but working full-time hours so that I could afford to save and kind of do what I wanted because uh, I was still supposed to be full-time at uni. So after I turned 20 um, and I you know, immersed myself in the supplement industry for, for a couple of years, I really, really liked it. I liked kind of the people. It was as crazy as an industry as it was. It was always growing and always moving. And I kind of decided one day to start saving up to run my own supplement store. Um, I was working full time in a store called Staunch, which uh, doesn't exist anymore. It was in Browns Plains at the uh, first original Go Health Club there. It would have been about 20 square meters. It was literally an old janitor's room that we'd turn into a supplement shop. And every now and then it would crank out some pretty good days. Rent was cheap. and It was one of the only affordable looking business models I had seen. So I worked about 30, 40 hours a week in coming into the last semester of my uh, university degree. And I saved up a total of $7,000. That's barely a bond and, and point of sale system. For some people, that's not even point of sale. I actually got to my last subject, which was an elective. I'd done all the marketing subjects I could do, all the advanced ones. I got to the last one, which was psychology, and basically couldn't be stuffed. I didn't really care about graduating at that point. I just wanted to take my money and start a business. So a lot of people don't know this. I never actually graduated. I have zero qualifications personally. I have all the marketing expertise that a person with a marketing degree has. I just didn't do the psychology elective, so therefore I'm not a qualified marketer. Who cares? Doesn't really matter. I went to originally start the house supplements. I went to a financial advisor that was good friends with my mum. Basically, my Alex, I just want to give you all the statistics and all the information before you spend any money or delve into anything, quit your job, anything like that, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. But okay, Alex, out of the out of all the businesses that start up, 90% of them fail in the first year. Crazy. Then he said, of the 10% that succeed in the first year, 90% of that 10% in the second year fail again. Here we are, four years later, what I believe to uh, well and truly have beaten the statistics. So basically, $7,000. Anyone that knows any kind of business or has seen rent or anything like that knows 7000 is nothing. It's about a grand off the top of my head. I think it was about eleven hundred just to just to register the company. It's a it's a private uh, proprietary limited company. And that costs a lot of money. When you really start to crunch the numbers, you find out seven thousand is a drop in the ocean. It's absolutely nothing. So the first thing I looked at being in the supplements industry for a couple of years, I got to know a lot of the reps, and I and I, and I began to negotiate. Hey, look, if I open the shop, do you reckon you could give me thirty day terms on something? You know, I'm confident I can pay it back. Even if I don't make any money, I'm confident I can pay you back. And at the end of the day, money rules everything. They were cool with that. So with the 7000 I had saved up, um, after paying for a computer, the point of sales for the Mac, um, a, couple, a little bit of Ikea floating shelves and literally some bunning shelves, and $100 for the logo, which a graphics designer who was actually a friend, who was actually a friend of mine, Joe, and my partner, Jess, uh, we kind of designed all at once on the couch my mum's house came up with. I only had maybe four and a half, five k left. I started hunting around on the real estate websites for a, a cool... Uh, kind of any, any hole in the wall. I knew the model would work um, as I worked at Sunshine, I'd seen it work. After a while, I spoke to some reps and, and this place in Cleveland came up. 
Now, I honestly had never heard of Cleveland, never been that way. I looked it up and we don't, we don't shop there anymore, so I'll let you guys know the rent was 7500 a year. Nothing. That's, my car repayments are more than that. Uh, so the bond was two months rent, so it was about 1500 bucks. So of that, whatever I had left, that four and a half, another 1500 went straight to uh, the bond. So I'd played, I had one, one month's bond and then another month upfront rent. So then the signs come along, the signs cost money. They're seven, eight hundred bucks to get the signs up. We didn't have a website for six months, for eight months. Um, with the four, three and a half grand I had left, I prepaid some orders with some accounts that wouldn't take me on terms and everybody else gave me terms. So I probably ended up having 20 to 25K in actual stock. Three and a half only paid for and the rest I had the 30 days. That was my deadline to pay it off. So every single dollar that came into that shop. Uh, via phone orders, bank transfers, whatever it was, went back to those people because nothing at the time was more stressful, and still now, is more stressful than having those bills paid. I, I hate debt, I hate the feeling of debt, and, and to know that somebody had gone out of their way to help me to get up there and start my dream, and then I let them down was the worst thing ever. So yeah, so the House of Supplements started on $7,000. I was, it was a week after I turned 21 that all the proprietary limited uh, certificates and, and the sole director shares and everything were, were done. So I was just 21, um, I'm 25 in July now. So the first year at Cleveland was quite tough. We had to be different. At the end of the day, you're all selling the same stuff. You can either di differentiate on price, which is a bad idea because then you just condition people to uh, always, to only buy when you're cheap. Which is, which is stupid and at the end of the day, bottom line, you're gonna lose money and with someone with no money to start with, that's the uh, last thing I wanna do is go even further into the ground. So, uh, Cleveland was an hour drive to work. So I would, I'd wake up about six, drive to the gym at, at the Cleveland Good Life, uh, train for an hour, go straight to work and then what uh, we figured was the only way to kind of bring in people, why were people gonna shop with me instead of where I used to shop, where I had built some customers, why would they come to me? So we offered any order over 50, actually no, any order at all, placed before, I think, 5 p.m. and we shot at 6, no, we shot at 5.30. Any order placed before 5 p.m. would get free same day delivery in Brisbane. And I'm talking, we would go as far as, you know, Jess and I would drive, Adrian and I would drive, a good friend of mine, Billy and I would drive. We would go as far as, as Ipswich, even further, I think, to the sticks, mud to pillar, you name it. And we'd go as far up as, I remember we went to a place called Griffin, which is halfway on the way to Caloundra. Keep in mind, I'm living in Jinder Lee and the shop's in Cleveland. So as a triangle, that's a good three, four hours drive uh, all the way around. You know, so the first couple of weeks, I, I remember I drove out to Brookfield, which was an hour and ten drive from Cleveland. Uh, at six o'clock at night after a big day, well, I would pick up Jess or whoever was coming with me at that time. Uh, we'd load up the car. And I remember I drove all the way out to Brookfield for a customer who's still with us today. Uh, spent probably 15 bucks in fuel to deliver a $45 product to which we only made about 10 bucks. Um, and that was the kind of grind that was the first six months. All money that came in would get spent. Um, I had this little uh, four-door Mazracina sports little thing. And it was champagne with pink racing stripes because my dad thought at the time he bought it, uh, which was my mum's car, that they were crimson. Uh, but little did you know, every time the sun hits, it was hot pink. It was the first kind of six months. We would do same-day deliveries and then orders would grow. Go from one to two. And sometimes I'd drive an hour out of my way for a $45 order. And I would always think, what the fuck am I doing? Why? This is hopeless. It's not going to work. We didn't have a website. I didn't understand what what the capabilities of being online were. We had a Facebook page, it was maybe five to a thousand likes, and I would do kind of engaging posts as much as I could. And we were taking orders through Facebook messages, just a lot of mates hitting me up by text, Facebook messages, hey bro, can I get this? What can you do for this? And I was doing my best to give, I still am doing my best to give everyone the best deals. And I remember we did about $100,000 uh, $100, in sales purely through Facebook messages over that first year, um, which was a big deal. Um, I remember the first day we did a thousand dollars in store and I remember thinking, holy shit, with the profit, that's what, you know, three days at staunch would pay me or whatever. And that's when you start feeling like things are happening for you and then you start growing and you start getting excited about the next day. And a thousand dollars a day is, you know, and then there becomes a time when a thousand dollars a day is you slam your head against the wall going, what the hell's going on? I'm, you know, it's all failing. It's funny how business works like that. You could do a 20 grand day and be over the moon. But then instantly you start worrying about, oh, no, tomorrow's going to be hopeless. But then when you do a bad day, you think the world's over. So you're never happy. Uh, good enough is never good enough. Just like in the gym, you're never big enough, you're never lean enough, you're never tanned enough. Whatever it is, uh, it, it, it transcends into business. So over the next year, we, we grew. Um, we started building a, a customer clientele. 
the I, I got a hold of guys like Josh Flynn, who's been my full-time IT guy for now three and a half years. We built up a website. The website was doing nothing. So over time, we started growing, and same-day deliveries started, you know, they would be one or two a day, then they got up to 10, then to 12, then on, on over a weekend, you'd come to Monday, and it'd be 20 or 30. And then, you know, next thing you knew, we were driving from 6.30 till one in the morning. Most nights I'd be getting home 12, 11.30, 12, and as late as one o'clock, just to make sure people got orders. I remember actually it got so late, and sometimes people thought we were burglar. We were burglars. A lot of people thought we were breaking in. We would knock on the door. You know, some of these kids were 16, 17, putting in orders. I'm only 20, 21 at the time. Knocking on the door in Ipswich at 11.30, going, hey, Alex here from the House of Supplements, I've got an order for you. And they would basically either think we were lying or in disbelief. And that, I think, was the big turning point. We didn't want to differentiate too much on price. We could be as cheap as we could to run our costs. Um, and like I said before, we were selling the same stuff. So how could we can be different? Same day delivery. And so word kind of got around that, hey, look, you need something. He will go out of his way to drop it to you. And people want to support stuff like that. People want to feel uh, part of a culture. And that's what we built. We built this little host nation. We built this culture. And, you know, here we are for four years later, thriving and going better than ever, uh, doing record weeks as of last week. Um, doing new things like YouTube channels and kind of being inspired by other friends in the industry who are doing things that I can see us really taking advantage of and honing on. Business is never done. Your model's never finished. There's always ways to increase sales, to increase awareness, increase communication, increase connection with your, with your customers, with the fans of the brand or whatever it is. If I went into detail over the last three years, um, we'd be here for hours and hours. And this is already going to be a long video. So let's just kind of speed it up. 12 months on, we opened the store in Milton, twice the size of Cleveland, about three times the rent, and on the busiest intersection in uh, Brisbane CBD, being that Milton Park Road uh, thing. We had horrible stairs, everything was, uh, we, it was literally a salon that we subdivided, it was way, it was, it was too small, it was bigger than Cleveland, but it was still too small, it was an awkward space, but we did what we did to be local, so we didn't have to do so much driving and people could come to us, and that did really well. Our opening day went off, we had like 180 people through the doors in four hours, which was insane for us at the time, and it's still pretty good in general figures. Another uh, year on, so House of Supplements is two and a half years old. Jess and I find a 89 square meter place in Strathpine, which is the same rent as Milton, but uh, two to three times the size, which was huge at the time, but as you'll see further on this video, is nowhere near big enough now. So that opened. So that's the third year in, we open that. Opening day goes okay, not as great as I'd like. Um, and then shit kind of starts to hit the fan really quick. Um, I've done some posts before about expanding too fast, and this is uh, kind of a big point, and I'll do proper videos on this, but so two and a half years in, we had our third shop. Keep in mind, it's completely bankrolled by us. No uh, uh, external money, no loans, no literally zero credit cards, nothing. Uh, so if we have a slow day, I start to panic, you know. Money doesn't come in, but it's always going out forever. Website, hosting fees, rent, electricity, staff, super, GST, baths. It, it does your head in. Like any accountant will tell you, the more you make, the more they take. I uh, think this is important to address because like I said before on social media, a lot of people only show you the highlight reels. They only show you, say, the nice car they get, uh, the, the promotion they get, the nice suit they bought, whatever it is, Cuban cigars, wine, I've seen it all. Um, and everyone does that, and a lot of successful people continue to do it, but like I said, it's a highlight reel. A lot of people don't talk about the stress and the panic attacks that, I mean, I, I know from first hand, a lot of people doing a lot better than me, starting, who have just started out, or who are 10 years my senior in business, will tell you about the immense panic attacks uh, and stressed situations that happen, and I'll tell you a little bit about mine. After we opened the third store at Strathpine, I remember about two weeks in, and... I won't go into too much detail, but we had some some issues uh, at the other shops. That once we wrapped up, once we wrapped up a few things there, some hidden bills started popping up, and I'm talking pretty big bills. I mean, orders blow out, and because you can't be in three places at once, you start not noticing. So anyway, you know, I put it, we put aside some money. We'd save for Strathbone, like I said, no credit cards. Started paying bills, and then all of a sudden, over the next month, the accumulation of about forty thousand dollars in unpaid bills from the month before, or even four months before, that had just never come to our attention, popped up. So here I am. I don't have forty k in the bank. I've just spent fifty, sixty, seventy, whatever it was, on the Strathpine stocking, the signage, which is a couple of grand there. Blah 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 blah. Uh, extra staff. You name it. 
So it's all there, I've got all these bills in front of me, and Strathpine's brand new, so it's not doing crazy figures. Our website is still not where it needed to be. I'd kind of been too busy doing deliveries and doing graphics and trying to be the one-man band uh, that you don't focus on the future. You, we didn't plan ahead. We would actually plan backwards. We would, there'd, it'd be Easter and, and bef an hour before, kind of the next day, I'd go, holy shit, we haven't done a sale. And it would be on, on people, one in the morning, I need this, I need this. That's not a way to run a business. You need to plan stuff months in advance. And the best businesses know what they're doing next year. Um, and that's so crucial. And that's something I'm still learning and I'm still trying to build that team to get that happening. We've got some big plans, which I'm excited to tell you guys about. Yeah, so basically one day about a month in at Strathpines, this is when we still had three stores and all these bills kept coming and you know, orders, we were doing okay sales wise, but not 40K recoup in a month kind of stuff. And I remember one day it was a, like it always is in Brisbane, a really, really hot, sweaty day. And Jess and I were at the shop, I think it was waiting to open or we were, you know, just kind of sitting down and looking at everything we had done. Cause you know, we did a crazy move and pack. Um, and Jess is the organizing queen. She's, she checks me. She's my checkmate. Every time shit hits the fan, Jess is there to put me in place and basically let me see the whole thing. And I remember the, uh, I don't know what we were doing. We we're in the back of the shop, organizing something, cleaning up. And I basically, I had had enough. It was, it was all too much for me. I remember taking my shirt off, putting it over my head and basically saying, that's it. I want to shut it all. I want to quit everything. This is too hard. I've worked too hard to go backwards and and I, I, I want to stop it. I want to close everything. I don't care about what people will think. I don't care about this, that. I just, I just don't want to be here anymore. This is not fun anymore. This is not what I intended to be at three years in or two, two and a half years in at the time. And you know, Jess was like, take a deep breath. Let's sit down. Let's nut it out. And for a couple of weeks, I put her through hell. I was the most depressed human being on the planet. And you can ask good mates of mine and business partners of mine, like Simon from Fitware, you ask him the shit I used to talk to him, you would think I'd been through the Holocaust. Um, and you, know, you put things in perspective and go, okay, this is a hurdle. It's nothing I can't get past. And you grow. And what happened from that? We started to see, my brother and I especially in store, we started to see clothing, our own host apparel, really starting to pick up. And I thought, you know what? There's nothing out there for gym brands. So I went on Facebook and I found a company you might have heard of. This is about two and a half years ago, keep in mind, called FK and Gymwear, who are now probably top five premier fitness brands in Australia. We were one of their first stockers. We got them in and people would, you know, would, would drive from Broadbeat to Strathmine to pick up two shirts. So I started looking at this go, hey, this is awesome. Like, we've got a differentiation again. We've got something new. People already like our host apparel, but they obviously want to try other people's apparel. So then what happened? We found Brick City Villain, who are also a young gunner, I think a year or two older or younger than me, doing it now. We picked them up. Then we started going to Muscle Rip. They started making uh, stringers for us, and I kind of saw this opportunity going, nobody, and still, nobody but us does the range that we do. So I said, hey, Adrian, what do you think about this idea? We tossed it around, and you know, at this time, money, I had no money, so I don't know what I was thinking, thinking about opening another company, but that's, that's what we did. And... About half an hour, uh, six months into House of Supplements being open, I went to financial advice and I said, look, I want to, want to open another company. They said, no, they said, you can't afford it. You can't do it. I asked lend, I asked all the people I had credit terms with and supplements. Hey, look, I'm going to need a little bit of help here. The margins are better. I might be able to pay you back quicker. And they ran with March last year, 2014, Jim Walker went live and it's been crazy since. Um, it blew up because we were international. We discovered a whole new community. We, we really hadn't thought about being with supplements. It's a lot harder to send supplements uh, worldwide. We'd always done apparel, but not to the level that Jim Locker did. So anyway, Jim Locker exploded. It's still, it's going fantastic. We went from packing say 20, 30 orders a day to upwards of 50 to 60 to 70 a day. And we're talking big orders, not one or two shirts. Some guys are getting whole new wardrobes. 38% of all our business now on Gym Locker is international, which is insane. Uh, the House of Supplements website has gone through the roof. We've probably doubled or tripled in online orders. And the more and more you might've noticed, we've shut two stores now. So we had three, we've just got one. Everything operates through the one house of supplement store and it's the capacity now. We're looking around for way bigger warehouses, which is something exciting we want to talk about and hopefully something we can document so you guys can really see what it's like to go to move and, and move shops and houses and stuff like that. Jess and I have done it three or four times now. We're pros at it um, and it's a huge learning curve. Uh, and, and you know you throw your back out, you yell at each other, things aren't organized and you really have to be in the same wavelength to get it done properly and efficiently. 
So here we are now, it's been uh, just over a year and I'm proud to say that you know we blitzed the first year of forecasted gym locker sales. I think we, we upped by about 110K uh, on what we wanted to and that's a, that's a huge success for myself, my brother Jess, our IT guy Josh now and our crazy uh, graphics designer Peter. So even recently, a couple months ago, uh, obviously having Gym Locker in the pocket there, you thought, what? I kind of wanted to, always wanted to do something for myself. You know, being in supplements other than the apparel side, we're helping other people's brands grow. We don't really do, we don't do our own brand to avoid being biased. And with Gym Locker, other than the Gym Locker generic brand, which we sell at a cheaper price, I didn't really have anything that I could call mine specifically. So uh, I started Citizen Zeus as a company, another public company that I'm going to take wholesale nationally and internationally in the next couple months once we get the second drop in and obviously put it straight on the gym lock and it's doing fantastic it's 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 um considering we only have 12 products it really couldn't be doing too much better than what it's doing at the moment and I'm you know we're building this team we've got a whole bunch of athletes on there that we're all friends and we're growing and we've got so much to look forward to that I'll again I'll talk about it. I don't want to keep going on this video uh yeah, so basically it's been a long ride, three and a half years at the moment, and we're three companies deep at the moment with something on the horizon that I've been sworn I can't say anything about. You'll see in due time, but it's, it's very close now. So basically, the, to the people that have stuck with me this far into the video, I want to kind of let you guys know what you can expect uh, for the future for these kind of videos. We've got exciting things coming up, like in October, we've got a, uh, Jess and I and Adrian, we're moving to a warehouse. We're actually scouting at the moment, looking for around two to 300 squares, which compared to what we've got is uh, enormous. It's still not that big, but it's gonna be big enough and it's gonna have room to grow. And uh, I wanna be able to show you guys that document, kind of show you the ins and outs. A lot of people, I forget being in it for so long, a lot of people have no idea what it's like. And I remember seeing Massive Joe's starting at the Arnold's and how they set up. That was hugely interesting to me and I'm already in the industry. So yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of photo shoots and a lot of filmings planned and I'll, I'd be happy to take you guys through the behind the scenes, kind of show you what that's like and just day to day stuff of what I think an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is about, the talking, the networking, the planning, the crazy amount of grind and work that goes into it that a lot of people don't really shine a light on too much because you can do whatever you want. You just have to find ways around it. There's always going to be a hurdle. Yeah, we may or may not be locking in a booth at the Arms next year and flying through one or two uh, kind of superstar fitness athletes, which would be something really exciting that I can't wait to share with you uh, once it's all locked in in the next couple of weeks. I'll take you guys through photo shoots and we'll touch on, uh, I want to touch on a lot of kind of in-depth topics about running a business, uh, staff, the stresses, the money side of it. Ultimately, the goal of this channel is to, is to inspire and hopefully help a couple of people. I have a... Ultimately, the goal of this channel, I mean, I know a lot of people that reach out who don't even have businesses yet or want to in the future and say, look, Alex, I've been following you for three or four years. What you're doing is, is, is fantastic. And, you know, do you mind giving me some tips or some advice? Hopefully I can relay those kind of messages that I've been giving to people personally all onto this onto this channel and help a lot more people. If, uh, if we can get it to spread, that'd be fantastic. If I can motivate, inspire, and or, or bring someone to be more enthusiastic about starting the business, or maybe you're in a business and you've lost that spark, I know I did, and then you need something to pick you up or, or to hear some, uh, someone's story or to know that you're not, you're not alone in what you're feeling. I think that's really important and that's kind of the ultimate goal that if I can get that out, if I can help one or two, one person, if I can even, if I can even help one person um, with the business, starting a business or whatever, if you have any questions, I'd love for you to email me um, and I can address them live as a, as a part of the channel, something like that. That'd totally be something I'd be willing to do and love to share with you. Um, ultimately, we just need subscribers and people to give a shit about it for it to continue. Thanks for watching the first uh, introductory episode to the Business and Fitness YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment anything privately or personally that you'd like me to address or talk about, and I'll absolutely get it done for you. And thanks for watching so far. This is Business and Fitness.